June Sarpong, the founder of politicsinthecity.com, the famed British TV personality, awarded an MBE on the Queen's 2007 <laughs> New Year's honors list. You're an inspirational figure, but I don't think most people realize just how inspirational you've been over the years. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's time to hear from some of the people whose lives you've changed forever in this. June Sarpong, a T4 icon. June Megatron Sarpong was born in a stable in Walthamstow just seven months before Christmas 1991. From the moment she arrived in this world, it was obvious she was destined to be a star. Actually, June, I would say, is the reason that I wanted to become an all-round performer because she's just, she was always the most amazing singer, dancer, actress. I mean, she can do the splits both ways. I find it very tough to talk about June because I, I get all nervous and shaky, you know? Um, being a kid who comes from the East End and playing gangster parts and that, um, the thing that used to scare me was June, in a way, so I always bring a touch of June to it, um, especially with the violence. With her manner under control and a successful stint at stage school behind her, June broke out into the world and embarked upon her early singing career. You are without question the most original talent in this country. <laughs> It's one of the biggest regrets of my professional life that I never signed June Sarpong. Is it June who was singing with Tom Jones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was amazing. Sex bomb, sex bomb. When a member leaves Sugar Babes, you know, we hold auditions and there's only one girl that springs to mind, and that's mm. June Sarpong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but she's, she never calls us back. Let, Let them lead the way. way. I'm an expert at Shakespeare, that's a hell of a lot. June soon got the early morning youth entertainment break she'd been waiting for, a day that will go down in history. It's funny because, you know, I think everybody really remembers where they were on that momentous day in 2001. It was as if our promised one had sort of suddenly arrived and I remember it as clear as day. I was doing my washing. I was so nervous the first time I was interviewed by June um, to sit there plugging my little album with someone with such immense talent. I just, I felt like a fraud. I saw her lose it one day in a canteen at London Weekend TV. I think a producer had upset her or something and uh, she threatened to uh, break his legs and, and, uh, and she more or less did. It wasn't long before the Sarpong presenter machine had won over the entire population of the planet and the big guns came a-knocking. I'm sure Jim would have uh, made a, a great replacement as, as Prime Minister. Um, but then she's still got so much to give youth entertainment TV. With a vote of confidence from the Prime Minister, now everybody wanted a slice of the Sarpong pie. Is it fair to compare Jackie Kennedy and Michelle Obama? Um, I think uh, that Michelle Obama is a sort of modern day incarnation of, of, of Jackie Kennedy. Um, I think also we need something else. You know, Jackie Kennedy was quite sort of mysterious and, and uh, you know, she was almost on the pedestal. And I think a lot of people probably would have been intimidated by Jackie Kennedy. Whereas with Michelle Obama, she's definitely of the people. She's one of us. You know, she wears J. Crew. And I think that that's what's brilliant about her. And, and talking about that school, I know that school very well. I have a friend who teaches there and my cousin went to that school. And I've, and I've visited that school on numerous occasions. I mean, I cannot even begin to explain what that would have done for the self-esteem of those girls. I think Michelle Obama is actually a great role model for all women of all races because she shows us that actually if you work hard and you have your own identity, you can achieve so much. She's not only special because she's married to Barack, she's special because of everything she's also achieved in her own right. Yeah. Well said. I'm just so flattered that you've come to see me, I must say. It's such an honour to be here with you. Thank you, darling. Are you influenced by the Lord at all, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> you always start your lecture with, I used to be the next president. <laughs> Could you be the next president? I don't have plans to run for president again. Well, we think you'd be pretty cool. That's very nice of you to say. <laughs> I appreciate that. But I'm involved in a different kind of campaign, and that is to spread awareness and to build a commitment well, thank worldwide. You. Thank you for doing that. Thanks so much for the oh, interview. I loved it. Cool. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host for tonight's party, writer, broadcaster, and MBE, June Sapong! <laughs>
Tonight we are here for one reason and one reason only. To celebrate the 90th birthday of Nelson Mandela. Give him a round of applause. Mandela! It's in our hands. It's in our hands. applause for easily the greatest man ever to walk the face of this planet, Nelson Mandela! <laughs> After we see, we all would like to say a happy birthday. So I think before the next band come on, we need to do one huge happy birthday to Nelson Mandela. Come on, everyone. Happy birthday, Nelson Mandela! Yeah! We can reveal this now, but um, without her, there would be no Channel 4 News. The lovers, the marriages, turning down Playboy twice. June's private life has seldom been off the front pages of tabloids and magazines across the globe. How do I say to Mr. Murdy, genius? Genius. Genius. Now there are a lot of ladies I hear that are queuing up for, to be Mrs. Scent. So what is the uh, criteria? Yeah, I don't know. I think it'll happen organically. I'll just meet someone. Yeah. And be friends with them. And then it will just... Yeah, and it'll turn into something now. Well, you know what? If I meet anyone that I think is right, I'll pass them your way, Fiddy. <laughs> I thought I knew what a wild night out was until I met June Sarpong. That girl knows how to party. Ask any so-called style icon or supermodel who is their biggest influence, and you'll get one name quoted back to you time and time again. The Pong. No one in Hollywood gets dressed without consulting June. It's, it's complete mayhem for her in, in the run-up to the Oscars or the Golden Globes. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. As an Australian, I pretty much owe everything to June. Um, not many people know it, but she actually discovered the country. It was a little more than a swamp and a quagmire until June came along and gave us the makeover. She's very good looking. She's very uh, witty and friendly. Well, Kanye, I think it's time for us to go and get a spot of men's grooming, if you're up for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who's going to cut my hair? <laughs> oh, the best in London, though you've got the best in the world. Don't okay, you? yes, I do, but uh, <laughs> I'll try something out. Prince Charles goes to this place. Are you serious? <laughs> well, I know I won't go because you have a different grade of hair, and uh, they might not be able to cut black people's hair. It was announced that there will be a month of official sadness upon the departure of Miss June Sarpong, MBE, from the post of T4 Grand Dame. Here's what some of the followers of her cult had to say. I'm just completely in awe of her talent. So, June, I wish you the best of luck and I can't wait to see you on the Broadway stage. I've often been asked, um, when portraying historical and epic roles like uh, Gandhi and uh, Spielberg, Schindler's List, what is my inspiration? Where do I draw my inspiration from? And there's only one answer, and it's three little syllables, June Sarpong. The thing that makes her a really good interviewer is that she doesn't, in fact, bring an ego into the interview. I'm not desperate. No? No. I'm doing this to broaden my career. I want to be a serious journalist. Yesterday, June, you spent 20 minutes making porridge in high heels and a thong. So? <laughs> Now, when I first became famous, if I'm going to be honest, it went to my head. I craved wealth, power, success, world domination. Oh, yes, I found that very confusing. But then I met June, and she really turned my life around. Now I crave wealth, power, success, world domination. And I don't find it confusing at all. <laughs> so God bless you, June. Thank you. What's up, baby? Hey, listen, I just wanted to take this minute to, to send you some love and, and say congratulations and, and just, you know, you just been doing the daggone thing to him and um, I'm proud of you. Good luck, June. You've been great on T4. I'm Misty. Bye. Congratulations, June, on a, a great show. You've been a real star. 
and I know in the future you're going to be even a bigger one. Well done.